I feel like eating from the middle is always the best part. I thought it would be really fitting seeing as though it is Day of the Dead in Mexico at the moment to make nothing other than Bread of the Dead. The Day of the Dead is celebrated in Mexico on the 1st and 2nd of November and some parts of Latin America. If you've been to Mexico during Day of the Dead, you will completely understand how big the celebration is. It's filled with festivals and amazing food, one of which things is Bread of the Dead. Bread of the Dead or Pan de Muerto is one of the offerings that is provided to the souls on the days to offer protection. So I thought it would be really fitting to show you how to make it today. So to start, I've just got my stand mixer with a dough hook attachment. So everything's gonna come together relatively easy all in one bowl. So what I'm gonna start off with is just some butter at room temperature. So you do wanna make sure that it is at room temperature so that way it helps cream and you're not gonna end up with hard little bits of cold butter that haven't emulsified properly. To that, I'm gonna add in some caster sugar, a little bit of salt, some aniseed. So this is one of the main flavors of the bread. So aniseed, if you haven't had it before, is very similar in sort of smell and taste to fennel. I find it a little bit more milder, so it's still got that licorice -y kind of flavor, which personally I really don't like, but I don't mind it in things like this when it's really mild. If aniseed isn't something that's gonna be easily accessible to you, I would just replace it with a little bit of fennel instead. Fennel seeds, I should say. The last thing that I'm gonna add in at this stage is just some of our flour. So I'm gonna get about half a cup out of our six cups and throw that in. And now I'm just gonna get this going until everything starts to come together. Now that the butter and sugar have sort of creamed together now, I'm going to start putting together my wet ingredients. So I've just got some eggs here, again, room temperature. So to this, I'm just gonna add in about a cup and a quarter of warm water and some orange zest. And I'm just gonna whisk this all together until it is nice and combined. So now I'm just gonna slowly start to pour this into my mixer until I have added in all of the liquid. For the sake of not spilling this all over my bench, I'm gonna do a quick uh, transfer into here so I can pour it out easier. So the mixture is still very wet, so this is where I'm gonna to start to add in my yeast and my flour. So I'm gonna start with about a cup of the flour to begin. And add in my yeast as well while that mixture is still warm. Just so that way it has time to activate. So you'll see that the dough is still a little bit sticky at this point. It's not quite done yet. What I'm gonna do now is just turn it out onto a floured surface and knead it until I'm happy with it. And I've given the gluten enough time to develop to make sure that it's smooth and nothing is sticking to my hands. So if you have been an avid bread maker during isolation this year, I'm sure you probably would know that this isn't your typical sort of bread dough. It is an enriched dough, which means it just has a higher fat content. So obviously the fat from all those egg yolks and the addition of all that butter is gonna give it a, I suppose like richer and lighter texture, similar to what you would expect from a brioche which I'm not mad about because it is absolutely delicious. So it's still a little bit sticky, which is fine. For the most part, I'm able to shape it into a ball. When I touch it, nothing is really sticking to my hands unless I play around with it too much. So that is what I want. So now all I'm gonna do is pop my dough into a bowl 
I have just sprayed the bottom with a little bit of oil just so that way it doesn't stick when it proofs. And then I'm just gonna cover it with some glad wrap and let this rest for an hour and a half until it has doubled in size. And then we will come back. So the dough has now been resting for an hour and a half. So what I wanna do is take about a quarter of the dough and separate it from the rest. And then I'm just gonna reshape the big chunk into a ball again. And I'm trying not to really knock it around too much because I do want to keep a lot of that gas in there so we end up with a really light and fluffy dough. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to pop this now onto a baking sheet that I've just lined with some baking paper. What I'm going to do with the rest is start to form, I suppose, the decorations. So this is where it makes the bread a little bit spooky and scary. What I'm gonna do is create what's supposed to look like some bones to drape over the top of the dough. So I'm gonna take one little piece aside first and just roll that into a ball because that's going to be the very center and I'll just set that aside. And now with this I'm going to divide in half and just roll out, start to roll out some logs. And I want it to be the length to go from end to end over the dough. So let's see, a little bit longer, that should do it. I'll roll out the other one about the same size. All right, now all I'm gonna do is pinch sections of it to sort of separate it to make it look like the ends of bones, if that makes sense. And there's no real technique to this that I have figured out myself. So, you know, just do what feels right. Those things where, you know, when you fiddle around with it too much, it's hard to stop and you just get to sort of go, yep, nope, that'll do pig, that'll do. Now, I think we can all agree 2020 is a year of bread making. I wanna know how much bread have you made this year? Is it a lot? Because I personally have not made any apart from doing this recipe, which I think is a credit to me. Um, and I'm just glad that it sort of phased out a little bit because yeast was almost impossible to get at one point and now it is definitely more accessible, which is good. So you will be able to make this recipe, I promise. Probably the most questionable looking sort of skull and crossbones I've ever seen, but you know what? It's fine. All I'm gonna do now is cover this again with some glad wrap and let it go for its second proof. So this one is gonna be about an hour and then we will come back just before it's time to go into the oven. Also, is it just me or does everybody's glad wrap end up like this where it's just completely falling apart? And I've done absolutely nothing to try and attempt to fix it or make it better and you just deal with it until you've used it all. Or is it just me? Because I feel like this happens to me every single time. So the dough has rested now for an hour. I've got my oven on now at 180, preheating, ready to go. All I'm gonna do now is give it a little bit of an egg wash. So this is just one egg that I've beaten up. And I'm just gonna brush that all over the dough to make it nice and golden once it goes into the oven. So I'm just gonna pop this into the oven now on 180 for 30 minutes and I will be back. All right, it is out of the oven. It is ginormous and it smells absolutely incredible in here. I love that it's gotten a nice golden sort of crust from that egg wash. You know, how bones and things have moved around slightly from, you know, expanding in the oven, but that is totally fine. I'm gonna let this cool down now before I do anything more to it just because I want to make sure that any residual heat from the inside, make sure that everything is cooked all the way through. So I'm just going to set that aside. While the bread is sort of cooling down and resting a bit now, I'm just going to finish off the last component, which is going to be an orange syrup to glaze over the top. So in a small saucepan, I've just got about equal parts of orange juice and caster sugar. And I'm just going to pop that over medium heat 
for a couple of minutes until all the sugar has dissolved. So now I'm just gonna brush over some of this orange syrup. Just get it everywhere. Now from this point, completely optional, you can also sprinkle over some white sugar as well if you're into that. I prefer not to, so I just like to leave it like this at this point. Now let's have a look at how this went. Oh my God, it looks so light and fluffy. So you can see that it's got a good crumb on it, so it's had a lot of aeration. Time for the important part, the taste test. This is so good. It really does border on the line of sweet and savory. You do get that light sweetness from the orange syrup on the outside, but then the aniseed is such a savory flavor. This is actually so good. I understand why it is so popular in Mexico. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. If you ever get the chance to go to Mexico over the 1st and 2nd of November, make sure that you take part in the celebrations during Day of the Dead. As always, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all next week.